What I find most annoying when it comes to signal controlled model railroad operations is implementing isolated block sections so that the control system can know where the trains are. It requires quite some planning, considerable efforts for wiring and the resulting complexity makes it hard to find problems if things do not work as planned. Not even to talk about making changes to the track plan after the layout has been in use for some time. I'm not interested in that, so I thought it's time to come up with a smarter approach. Hello everyone and welcome to the IOTT channel. I'm Hans Tanner. A special welcome to all new subscribers and welcome back to everyone else. I'm happy you made it here and thank you for your support of my channel. Over the last three months I spent a lot of time working on the shed building I briefly showed in video number 140 and I am pretty happy that the project is almost completed on the outside. Needless to say though that there is still a lot of work to do to finish the inside of the shed the way I want it. In and around the shed building I plan to build my garden railroad with some Switzerland inspired bridges and tunnels and of course some train stations. I first will just do a simple loop and train storage tracks inside the building but later on I hope to branch out and lay track around the shed and up the hill to the house and possibly even to the front yard. That for sure is a multi-year project, so we will see how it goes over time. Now, when building a garden railroad, the wiring of a block system becomes even more cumbersome than on an indoor layout. I don't think it is a real good idea to have sensible electronics modules installed outside, but installing them in the shed and run long wires to each individual track section is problematic as well and resistor-based occupancy detection may fail altogether if the track is wet or a snail is crossing the track. So I want it simpler, without wiring and more reliable and I think it is feasible. In this video I'm going to show you what I want. Basically an overview of the workflow or the work steps needed for setting up and operating the layout. In the next video I am going to look into the how, so technologies I am going to use or possibly develop to make it happen. So these two videos will at the same time be an overview on my development priorities for the next several months to come. Here is my intended workflow for setting up and operating a model railroad with a block system without physical blocks. It consists of six major steps. Lay the tracks, create a geometric model of the track system, define the operations model with blocks and signals, place the signals on the layout and configure the turnouts, deploy the model to the trains and run the trains automatically or manually. The idea is to make the process so simple that it is possible to run signal controlled trains even on a temporary layout. But let's have a closer look into the six steps of the workflow. In step one I start with laying the track. I may already have a rough sketch of what I want to do or maybe even a CAD drawing and parts list or maybe I just want to do a temporary layout for playing or try out a new branch line on an existing layout. In any case, I start with laying the track so that I have something to run the trains on. At this time I do not really think about block sections or inserting isolation gaps into the track. The only location where I put the gap is to isolate reversing loops or track triangles to make sure that the track system is without short circuit between the rails and thus can be powered with whatever current supply type I plan to use, be it AC, DC or DCC. And of course, no track power is an option as well if the plan is to use battery operated trains. 
After laying the track, step two is to put a measuring train on the track and run it once over the entire track network. While driving, the train size sensor creates a geometrical track map by recording direction, radius, length, slope and super elevation at each point of the layout. I have originally shown that method in videos number 82 and 83. The data is transmitted to a configuration web page where the track layout is drawn as the measuring train moves over the layout. If there already is a compatible CAD drawing of the layout available, it may be loaded into the web page without running the measuring train. Regardless of what method is used, after performing step 2, an accurate track data model is available and can be used in the next step. In step 3, the track data model is used to generate the layout operation model. To get started, I select the track sections where trains are allowed to do scheduled stops, like platforms, sidings and the like. The system generates the so-called security element model, which defines the required block sections, the location of signals and some other operational data. Signal head and turnout addresses can be assigned by the system or can be edited individually depending on what existing hardware is available. Note that block sections are only defined in the operation model. There are no physical track gaps and block sensors, so there is no additional wiring needed besides powering the track. In case I just did an addition to an existing layout, the operation model is not created from scratch, but edited based on the existing data. In step 4, I need to make sure that turnouts and signals are correctly placed and can be controlled using the address assigned in the previous step. What needs to be done depends on the technology that is used. When using DCC, I typically will use turnout decoders. Other technologies may require different actuator types. Anyway, installing turnout actuators is somewhat mandatory for remote-controlled turnouts. For a small layout, I may of course opt for using manual turnout levers. For signals, it is different. The current aspect of the signal is provided by the control system in the operation model and the physical signal is basically only a decorative element placed on the layout. So, I may or may not physically place them. For a temporary layout I probably will not, but for my garden railroad I definitely plan for having working signals placed along the track. Once the hardware is installed and working, the operation model is wirelessly deployed to the trains and the layout and the trains are ready for operation. This means the trains need to have a little more onboard electronics than just a DCC decoder. The minimum is a distance sensor like the purple hat, but integrated in the locomotive. And the second important element is bidirectional communication between the locomotive and the command system, so that the locomotive can report its position to update the occupancy status of the blocks. Now the trains are initialized with their current location, either by remembering the last position or passing over a defined point and after that they keep track of the current location by recording the traveled direction and distance as well as the position of turnouts along the way. The current position is continuously broadcasted so that it is possible to update block occupancy status in the operations model, set signal aspects accordingly and display the position of the trains on a CTC panel. Trains can be operated manually with an engineer setting the speed using a handheld throttle and the train side sensor and decoder may check and verify that the operator follows the rules and reduce the speed if necessary, for example if the engineer is about to approach a signal too fast. So it is kind of a supervised manual mode. The trains can also run in automatic mode, simply controlled by signals along the track. 
Since the mode can be set individually per train, it is possible to control several trains in automatic mode by just setting the position of turnouts and aspects of signals on the layout, while other trains operate in engineer-controlled mode and the dispatcher sets turnouts and signals on a CTC panel for the operator to observe. So, what's new here, you may ask? Well, the most obvious difference is that instead of using track side sensors like block detectors, I am switching to use train side sensors, namely a distance tracker and possibly an IMU to detect the travel direction. This change reduces the amount of wiring dramatically and brings the option of using signal controlled operation down to the level of temporary layouts. And of course, it dramatically simplifies the configuration of blocks and signals, as this step can be automated to a large degree. Furthermore, it allows for more advanced and up-to-date operation concepts like moving blocks, and it gives more options for powering the trains and more. Sounds interesting? I am sure it will take me a while to put everything to work. The idea is to use my new G-Scale garden layout as a pilot implementation, as there is much more room in G-Scale rolling stock for additional equipment, like the travel distance tracker. Once it all works on this scale, I will then try to shrink it to fit HO and maybe even N-Scale. We will see. I certainly will report on the progress in my videos. So, if you want to be updated on the progress, it certainly is a good idea to subscribe to the channel and activate the notification function so you are in a premium seat when new videos are released. And that's it for this video. I hope this information was useful or at least interesting for you and it gave you some ideas what could be possible when using train side sensors instead of traditional blocks. In the next video I will follow up with some details about the technology, show you what I already have available and what I need to work on over the coming months, so stay tuned. In the meantime I am looking forward to read your comments about the approach in the comment section below. And if you like this video and this type of content, please click the like button below to let me know. It is a quick and easy way to support my channel as it motivates YouTube to suggest this video to other model railroaders. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.